Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN. This is Computer Care Clinics. Tip of the day. Today we're going to look at Windows 10. That's right. It's not Windows 9. We went from Windows 7 to Windows 8 to 8.1, and we're totally skipping 9. Apparently, in Microsoft's eyes, 9 is an unlucky number. It's a multiple of 3. I don't get that, but... Whatever. Anyway, it's Windows 10. This is the tech preview. It is available online, and uh, you have to sign, sign up with a Microsoft account, and I do believe they give it to just about anybody who wants it for free. But um, what you have to realize is when you install this, it will install over your operating system, and it's not a permanent solution like the Windows previews typically are not, meaning that it will overwrite your operating system and pretty much kill whatever you're running on your computer. So you definitely don't want to do this on a computer that you use every day. So what I've done is put it in a virtual machine. It's kind of slow and clunky, but uh, it seems to work pretty good, good enough for a preview anyway. So if we're still very early, there's still probably some bugs in this thing. It's a little slow and clunky, but uh, for the most part, we found it to be uh, pretty nice. Uh, the major change in Windows 10, if I can move this thing, and it is very slow, we have a start button now. But the start button is really a functional start button. It doesn't just flip you back to that Windows 8 tile menu. What it does is it gives you a start menu tile menu. It may not even make sense. I don't even know what to call it. We'll call it a start menu. And you can see that all the live tiles or the tiles are actually kind of listed on the right here. But if you click on the All Apps, which is similar to the programs that you found in Windows systems all the way back through Windows uh, 95, you're going to see a list of everything, all your apps, all your old Windows apps, uh, the native stuff. And there's even a spot here for documents. A lot of people are having problems finding their stuff on Windows 8 and 8.1. And it is, I have to admit, it's kind of clunky. Not everybody gets the search thing, um, if, especially if you come up with Windows over the last 20 years. You're going to, uh, you know, have a, a, a certain way of doing things that you will find hard to change. A lot of people found that hard to change, so they resisted upgrading to Windows 8. However, this Windows 10 appears to bring it back. Now, this is kind of cool. So, uh, there's some weird stuff in here, but you'll see... Uh, well, I'll show you a couple real quick things I found here. I've installed a couple of the Microsoft games, the Solitaire Collection, Jigsaw, and all the stuff that's in the Windows 8 App Store is available for Windows 10, and it appears to run fine. Uh, again, I'm in a virtual machine, so it's kind of clunky. I'm actually running Windows 10 in a virtual machine on top of Windows 8.1, so um, it's taken up a tremendous amount of processor cycles and resources, but... So that's why it'll seem a little slow. If you did it on a native machine just running Windows 10 by itself, which we've done at our shop, it actually runs very, very well uh, with about 2 gigs of RAM and a, a multi-core processor. So what's neat about this is we talked about having these tiles over here on the right, which is a great idea. And what you can do is a couple of things. You can add more tiles to this Start menu by just right-clicking on a program and then click on Pin to Start, and then it'll expand it out to the right, and they're solitaire. But what's really cool about this, which you couldn't do in Windows 8 or 8.1 without a great effort and being like a level 3 programmer coder and knowing all kinds of stuff or cheating and looking at our videos, is you can actually, you can actually mess up your desktop again. I know that Kim Commando says you can't have all this stuff on your desktop, and 100 years ago that was the truth because you, you're... Computer didn't have the power to render all those icons and redraw everything on your desktop. But again, that was 20 years ago. I'd say within the last 10 to 15 years, it has been fine to put as much as you want on the desktop. And a lot of people do that because that's the way they stay organized. The first thing that comes up when you see your computer is what? It's the desktop. So if you use Word, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, whatever you're using should be right there, easy for you to find on your desktop. That's not to say you should put all your stuff on your desktop because it looks a little cluttered, but a lot of people operate that way. Now you can do that once again. So you can right-click on anything in this menu, and you can uh, actually, no, that's not correct. You can pin it to your start, which you can do, which uh, we just did with the solitaire, but that's not what I wanted to show you here. What you can do is now left-click on any one of these icons, and you can drag it to your desktop. Look at that! I got a, I've got a shortcut. I've got chills here. You don't understand how great this is, how happy I am, and how happy the rest of Microsoft Windows users will be now that you've thrown this functionality back in here. Thank you, Microsoft. And I believe you can also take, take the start tiles. Let's see if you can drag those. I haven't tried this yet. You can, absolutely. You can drag those 
tiles to your desktop too and create shortcuts. Now, if you want to fumble through all your programs and all the stuff, you have the stuff that you use every day on a daily basis and you want to do it really, really quick because you want to be hyper productive. Now you can create those shortcuts right on your desktop without any fuss or muss or craziness. So I think uh, this is the winning operating system. I think this is the upgrade that's going to win people over for Microsoft. I think this is the, the one that will probably be integrated in most of the businesses who held off from upgrading to Windows 8 and 8.1. And also the consumers, too, who are a little scared of the clunky tile thing. And you won't have to use the um, third-party Windows 8 start buttons anymore. You can. Those are probably still available, and they probably will work since the kernel and the basics of this operating system look very, very similar to Windows 8. So I would be surprised if they didn't work. Um, all the other stuff seems to be the same here. Uh, I looked at Control Panel yesterday. Now I can't find it. Uh, one more thing I want to show you, too. Remind me. Can you remind me? You can't remind me. So we go to Windows System here, and oh, the other thing I couldn't find was uh, Windows Updates but I'm sure they'll add a shortcut for that. The control panel, your default programs, your explorer is all the same as Windows 8. The control panel really hasn't changed since Windows Vista, and that's great. A lot of people know exactly where to go to uninstall a program or make changes to your network or security and stuff, and that is beautiful. Um, Security-wise, Defender is also included. Um, I believe the charms bar has disappeared because I have been unable to find the charms bar. We don't know if they're going to leave that out. Again, we're still very early in Windows 10. We've got several months before the final version comes out. Um, search function is now down here instead of off to the right. You don't have to drag things from the top down to close them. They've got a close bar just like, uh, not a close bar, but the uh, the X, the uh, I'm sure there's a, a term for that, but I'm not sure what it is. There's a kind of a top title bar with an X where you can close your programs again. Um, and to search is uh, down here, so you can put whatever you want in there, and it brings up the Windows 8 search, which also searches all kinds of stuff. It actually goes out and searches the Internet, too. searches all your apps, and uh, all that stuff's available for you, too. Uh, the Windows updates were in here, too. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Uh, I'm sure you can get to it through Control Panel, too, but I didn't try that. Um, all right, just to wrap things up, I know you guys are busy, and I'm busy, and I have computers to fix. Now, to shut this thing off, of course, since you lost your charms and your typical tiles, it's all the way up top here. I don't know why they moved that up top. So that's kind of weird. So your shut off is now up here, your power options, and that appears to be the only place you can find it other than pressing the power button on your computer. But... Um, it's kind of strange. I'd personally, Microsoft people, I'd rather see that on the bottom. If you're going to change back to this typical start menu, why not just throw that out to the right on the bottom like you had it before and avoid any confusion? But uh, you could do it up top. Hey, man, that's uh, your gig. But uh, I, I <laughs> it's there. Just so you know it's there. If you're fooling around Windows 10, you'll know how to shut this thing off. But I'd rather see it on the bottom. That's just my personal opinion. So Windows 10, um, it's the technical preview. is still very, very early. We're not in beta yet. And I'll be anxious to see what changes they make uh, as we get closer to the final release. Uh, my name is Chuck Fresh. Please subscribe and like our videos. And uh, thanks again for watching. I'm the PCGYN, and that's your tip of the day.